So we've talked about the sun and its importance for your plants and your vegetables as you get started growing your garden, building your garden. I'm going to talk to you briefly about soil and the real basics of soil. So soil can be its entirely own course and I'm certainly not qualified to teach a course on the ins and outs of soil, but I can certainly share with you the things that I've learned about it. To start, the if you're buying your plants already semi-grown from somewhere like Lowe's or Walmart, um, you can't keep them in those pots. So those temporary pots are temporary. So you've uh, looked at the sun where it's going to shine and you've decided where you want to plant them. Now you have to make a happy home in the ground for you to plant them. People can do it lots of different ways. You can do raised beds, you can plant directly in the ground. But the things that you have to keep in mind for soil are it needs to be full of organic it needs to be full of nutrients and organic matter it, things like nitrogen phosphate and tons of other stuff um, it needs to be a nice uh, consistency so the the plant wants to put its roots in the ground and grow if you have very clayey soil lots of clay that soil is very dense and it's hard for the roots to grow so if you have something that's a lot of clay you likely need to add something in there that's going to break it up maybe some sand some sort of other soil um, if you have very sandy soil that's too loose you know you can't build a house on sand you can't expect a plant to grow directly in sand there's no nutrients and the water just runs away um, and so you're trying to find that ease that mix and I'm going to show you some photos of different types of soil that I found in my own yard and the soil is going to be different everywhere and that's why there's no um, easy way to tell you how to do this um, so you're gonna figure out where it is dependent on the sun and then you're gonna figure out the soil. You most likely, if you're just starting, will need to buy garden soil or potting soil because our soil in a, in a standard American yard has been very badly abused. It's, if it's under a lawn, um, it's likely had pesticides and fertilizers on it and those um, weed and feed sort of products basically kill all the good stuff under there it's only there to grow that type of grass that's there and it kills absolutely everything else so there's no nutrients in there for other plants and i would question wanting to grow in directly in soil like that if especially if you're trying to be organic um, so you'll likely have to bring soil in eventually though you'll want to start looking into being regenerative and I will ask you to Google regenerative gardening. I took a regenerative gardening course through Kiss the Ground. That's a great resource and you can look up farmer's footprint as well to understand more about that. But um, you figured out where it is because of the sun, then you need to make nice soil and the soil again needs to be full of nutrients and needs to be kind of a nice texture so that the roots can go in and expand. Uh, it also needs to have decent drainage because if you have waterlogged soil that will drown the plant just as much. And say you didn't take the plant out of the pot for a while, that's not so great either what will happen is you'll get root bind the, the roots will if it's in the pot it will try and they'll circle and that will kill the plant in and of itself so make a happy home for it get it out of that temporary pot and put it in the ground and i'm going to show you some photos of different types of soil in my yard and then i'm going to show you a couple of different beds that we have and hopefully that's helpful so get a shovel out and get into your soil to understand what's there. This is soil that's been kind of burnt out because it's exposed to the sun. And you'll see here, it's got a lot of clay in it. It's quite sandy. There's not a lot of life in there. I don't see any worms. I don't see any mycelium or fungus growing there. This is soil that was under leaves that we haven't raked or touched in years. And so this soil is actually very nice. It has those little strands of mycelium coming out. There's life going on under there. And this is soil under a bunch of weeds that we haven't weeded for a good two or three years. And even it is nice and fluffy and looks pretty good. This is a start of a hugel culture bed. We actually dug into the ground. Not all hugel culture starts like this, but this is how we started. So we dug a hole and then we filled the bottom of the hole with rotting logs that we found around our yard. The idea with this is that the wood has lots of organisms and it's gonna feed the soil as it continues to break down. We topped those logs with compost, soil. We added some seaweed and some sea salt to get the minerals in there. Lots more soil, lots more compost and then we topped it with straw as a mulch and we plan to put potatoes into this.
So this is the finished Hugo culture bed that I've done for the potatoes. This is my experimental bed. Um, I've shown pictures of how it started. These potatoes, I just, I didn't pay any attention to spacing. I really just kind of put them in there. Um, the, the mulch is working really well here as well. It's doing a couple of things. It's reflecting the sun at the peak. So it's keeping the soil cool and it's really nice and moist. And something I can do, and I do this often, is just come in here and dig my finger down and feel what it's like under there. And that gives you a good idea of if it needs watered or not. But these leaves, these potatoes are doing fantastic. Another thing about planting so thickly like this is that now that the leaves are up, it also acts as weed suppression because the weeds, if they were trying to come up under the potatoes, leaves wouldn't get any light so they don't grow. So this is a raised bed of sorts. This is a bed, this is our original bed that we first started using five years ago. And my husband's always sort of done the conventional gardening of tilling it first uh, and then amending the soil. And this year we're doing it a little bit different. We're doing it regeneratively. So this whole bed besides the kale here, and the kale is bolted, this part especially was full of weeds, but we didn't want to tear up all the weeds just because that's a pain in the butt. and. We also wanted to try this no-till stuff. So um, about a week or two ago, he did a chop and drop and a chop and drop is just taking your hand pruners and chopping it up. Here's a little example of a chopped up kale plant. He chopped it and then he just literally like snipped it into little pieces. So he did a chop and drop with the weeds and then he covered that with compost and then he covered it with this mulch of straw. And um, we're really liking the straw so far as a mulch. And you'll see it looks pretty good. Our plants aren't fighting for space with the weeds. Um, and we do plan to plant some, I think maybe some soybeans over here soon.